think the, the first one is obviously logging and metrics. Those are extremely popular uh, solutions for us. And we don't stay stale with logging and metrics. I mean, the environment changes every day. Uh, when, trying to when it comes to try to capture log files and we try to ca capture metrics. So the best example is that now, if you're using services like, or tools like Docker and Kubernetes, if you're re-architecting your service, uh, your system, to have many more services that are single purpose versus one service that is multi-purpose, you end up in a system that has services coming and going like crazy. And you want to be able to have a system or a way to monitor those uh, applications um, in an efficient way in, and hopefully in a way that you don't have to go and try to change configuration files every day. Uh, so we've really uh, embraced that and embraced this uh, new way of building applications. Um, and we've done a lot when it comes to being able to auto-discover various services uh, that are uh, running uh, in common platform, or whether it comes into trying to be able to monitor uh, or uh, tail log files that come from systems like Docker and Kubernetes. And in order to show you what we've done over the past year, I'd love to welcome Moni Monica on stage to talk about it. Hey, Monica. Thanks, Jai. Hi, everyone. A critical feature uh, for, uh, for any monitoring solution for Kubernetes is uh, to be able to dynamically adjust this configuration when something happens in your cluster. Because you don't want to change the configuration of the, of the monitoring solution each time a new pod or a new application is deployed in Kubernetes. In, in Beats, uh, this is solved by the auto-discovery feature. And to demonstrate the auto-discovery feature, I would like to uh, show you this uh, new Kibana app that we have been working recently. It's still a work in progress. It's called Infra UI. Uh, and this is a great way for you to see an overview of your infrastructure of your running services. So if we go to the Kubernetes tab, here we'll be able to see all the pods. And each of these boxes is a pod. And you can group them by different fields. For example, you can group them by container name, namespace, node, and so on. And also, you can filter them to select only a few pods by the same criteria. If we click on one of these pods, we'll be able to see this dedicated, curated dashboard uh, that gives you an overview of your pod. And it gives you metrics like CPU usage, memory usage, network traffic, and so on. Metrics that are collected with metric bit, but also logs. Logs that are coming from that particular pod that are collected with file bit. Now I would like to show you a simple deployment that I did. It's a deployment for NGINX. And for that, I will need to set the filter to NGINX deploy. And then, as you can see, I have here two NGINX pods that are running on two different nodes. Now, let's scale uh, the, um, the my deployment to five, five NGINX pods. And for that, I'm going to use the kubectl scale command, where I set the replicas to five. It takes a bit of time for Kubernetes to create all these new pods. So now, if we go back to the UI, we'll be able to see in a second. Yeah, here we are. So we have five pods. <laughs> So it's cool to see uh, that how these pods are show up in, uh, in real time in this UI, but this is not sufficient for monitoring Kubernetes. Besides seeing a list of all your pods, you also want to see to monitor the service that is running in each of these pods, and in our example, NGINX. And for that, you have to run uh, the NGINX module for Metricbit to collect the metrics from NGINX. You also have to run the NGINX module in Filebit to, um, to collect and also parse the NGINX logs. OK. Now, um, Bit 601 is coming with manifest files that we are using for uh, deploying 
uh, metric bit and file bit uh, that makes it easier for you to deploy metric bit and file bit on your Kubernetes. And here, basically, this is a metric bit manifest file. And here, what I did, I added this section to configure auto discovery. And here, I instruct metric bit to start to listen for Kubernetes events. And when a new pod with the container name Nginx starts, then it enables the Nginx module uh, to be able to monitor the Nginx service inside that new pod. And here, as you can see, I'm setting this config template to configure the Nginx module. And here, under the host, is constructed the URL of the Nginx service uh, based on the, the properties of, of the pod. Similar, we are doing this for, for FileBit as well. And here, I'm configuring auto discovery. Uh, and when a new uh, pod with container name Nginx is started, then the Nginx module uh, in FileBit is started to be able to collect and parse uh, the Nginx logs. If we start this, uh, then we'll be able to see under this uh, dashboard that I prepare. So this is, this is a dashboard that shows you an overview of the Nginx service. And as you can see here, I have five pods. And also, I can see the logs that are collected from all these Nginx instances. And as you can see here, I have the Nginx error logs, and I also have the access logs. As you can see here, the access logs are already parsed. This is because of the ingest pipeline from the Nginx module in FileBit. Now let's go also to metrics bit overview. And here you will see the aggregated metrics that is, are coming from all these Nginx instances. And you can see things like active connections, request rate, drops rate that are coming from all these uh, Nginx instances. Or we can select an Nginx host, and then we'll be able to see all these metrics that are for this specific uh, Nginx host. That's all. Now back to Shai. Thank you very much, Monica.